going down, going south. It turned into a no, big so it was going downhill when I left New York 40 years ago. I, I would never expect it would go up. It's not a roller coaster. It's always been on a downhill. Why? What's happened now? Well, the, the homeless, homeless pop, population is... Oh, uh, oh, you mean the bums moved in. Yeah, they, they, they never the, moved The out. bums moved into all of the the abandoned arcades. They're living in there in shooting galleries. Is that it? Oh, my goodness. You have no idea, Dr. Savage. On the streets, right across the street from Nathan's, you can't even get a hot dog in peace. You you, you buy an overpriced hot dog, and you gotta, you gotta get it. Yeah, and you're lucky you don't get a needle in the hot dog. How much for a hot dog? No, I said you're lucky you don't find a hypodermic needle in the hot dog. I wouldn't be surprised, Dr. Savage. I'm... Well, here in San Francisco, the people can't put their children on a sliding pond in a sand park, like a park with it in a playground, because the kids were sliding down the uh, the sliding ponds, going in the sand, and they were getting stabbed with needles thrown there by the vermin, the bums. Yeah, the, the... That's all. No, 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 that's called the death of the West. That's how civilizations decline. Thanks for uh, a cheerful thought today on the Savage Nation. I just hit drop and the line is still there. Well, okay, that's working. Now let's fly across to the West Coast, to the w wonderful uh, city that I live in, San Francisco. Terrence on KSFO. Terrence, what's your topic? Yes, uh, the homeless in San Francisco and Santa Rosa, where I live. Pleasure to speak with you. No, go ahead. Speak already. Okay, yes. Yeah, so in uh, Santa Rosa, I was here uh, sitting inside a Chinese restaurant, and uh, there was a wall to the building next to me and a man dropped his pants and started peeing against the wall and uh that kind of turned me off i told the owner who was chinese and he, he said oh, well there's nothing we can do about it so uh well wait wait, wait. He, the man peed against the wall but you, you, don't you understand how civilized that homeless man is he didn't pee against the window while you're eating did he i'm sorry sir he didn't pee against the window while you're eating there with your girlfriend look how civilized he is he was civilized enough to turn around and pee on the wall. I mean, that's quite a plus. It just shows you that your bums are more civilized than ours in San Francisco. Here in San Francisco, they wouldn't pee on a wall. They pee on the window while you're eating. That's my next is San Francisco uh, incident with a, with a homeless person. Well, oh, yeah. Let, let's hear the next homeless horror story about San Francisco. Let's hear it. I don't know if it's horror, but ultimately there's two of them. But there, Fisherman's <laughs> Wharf, uh, there was... Uh, homeless well you know homeless person with a pit bull in front of a business doorstep and i just, i asked him i walked by i wasn't going to go in the business but i felt for the business owner so i said hey, can you just can you move out of the way so the man can make a living i'm not going anywhere i don't know anybody anything f you know the the explicative uh, so in other words he was aggressive he was entitled he was hostile the police know who they are, and they can't do anything about it because of Mayor Ed Lee and the homeless, the homeless mafia in San Francisco, which makes a fortune off the bums by telling everybody we owe them houses. They collect hundreds of millions of dollars for homeless services. How much of it goes into actual homeless services? Nobody really knows. It's siphoned right off the top. And by the way, here's a little secret. How much of it is kicked up stairs to Congress? I can guarantee you a lot of it goes right up to the top. It's a shame on Pelosi. It's a shame on Feinstein. It's a shame on Boxer. And it's a shame on Governor Brown that he permits this festering disease called homelessness to uh, rage out of control, not only in San Francisco, but the entire, let us say, collapsed edifice called California, a state that I still love very, very much, despite the mental illness of liberalism. We're talking about homeless horror stories. If you have been confronted or, let us say, assaulted by a bum in the, in the near recent uh, past, we're going to talk about it on the show until somebody does something about this scourge. And by the way, nobody is talking about the issue of bums in the streets except me. I know there are other topics and they're very important, but this bum problem is now a cancer on all major cities, and that is owing to the philosophy called liberalism the false compassion of liberalism has yielded the issue that we are discussing i'll be right back be here or be nowhere join the savage nation call now 855-400-SAVAGE 855-400-7282 savage warning the savage nation contains adult language adult content Psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised.
And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Well, we should have doubled and tripled up the sanctions and negotiated from strength. We could have done it so easy. Instead, we have Kerry that goes on bicycle races. He's in a bicycle race. He's 73 years old. 73 years old. And I said it the last time I spoke. I swear to you, I will never enter a bicycle race if I'm president. I swear. <laughs> I swear. He, he's in a bicycle race. He falls, he breaks his leg. This is our chief negotiator. He's walking in. They're looking at him like, what a schmuck. This is <laughs> Oh, do we need him as president instead of these uh, stiff stooges who are so full of crap that it makes San Francisco's bums look like they're clean. Welcome to the Savage Nation. A little more Trump news on the Savage Nation. Trump and Cruz are joining together to hold a joint event to blast the Iran deal. Now, how do you like that? Now, that's, by the way, a little bit of a signal. Presidential candidates Donald Trump and Ted Cruz just announced they're going to appear together at an upcoming rally against the proposed nuclear sellout with Iran. Trump announced this event during an appearance today in South Carolina, saying it would be, quote, in the next few weeks. Now, this is very interesting because Trump and Cruz appearing together would indicate that it's going to be a Trump Cruz ticket, which would be a lot smarter than a Trump uh, Palin ticket. In fact, my advice to Mr. Trump would be, Keep Palin as far away as you can. I'm nothing against her, but she is, uh, let us say, yesterday's news. And Cruz is a very smart man, would make an excellent uh, second in command, and would give America the, the national security, <clears throat> security that we need. 855 400 I want to move back to the issue that we're discussing on the Savage Nation, which is the out-of-control bum problem in the United States of America. It's a serious issue. I'm a very compassionate man. Many cities are being plagued by bums. They say, according to January 2014, there were 600,000 people who are living in the streets. Targeted U.S. spending for the current year is $4.5 billion. That's what they say. New York City spent over a billion dollars on bums in 2014. San Francisco claims it spends... Uh, a total of, let's see, the number, 167 million. That's very low because if you add in ambulance services, hospitalizations, police services, it's way over $200 million, much higher than that. In fact, it was $200 million 10 years ago. I know it's, it's very much higher than that. Now, if it was solving the problem and helping these unfortunate people get back on their feet and become productive citizens, I would say it's money well spent. But it is not helping them. It's making them worse. All they're doing is giving them drugs and sending them back on the street. I would like your ideas, and let's have a rational discussion on this. Look, we're all disgusted by the bums, and we've all gotten so used to them that we sidestep them. We all know not to engage. You know the rules of, bu of bumology. You want bumology 101? Let's say you don't live in a big city. Bumology 101 uh, tells you that when you're walking in a big city, when a bum looks at you, don't, st don't look at him. Never have, a, don't look away. It's like, uh, it's like Michael Corleone's advice that they gave Corleone in The Godfather 1 after he shot uh, Salazzo the Turk. Fat Clemenza said to him, throw the gun on the floor, walk out slowly, don't run. Throw the gun on the floor, walk, but don't run. The same rules apply to the bums. You walk, but you don't run, and you don't engage them, but you don't look away from them. Um, they have radar. You got to understand something about psychotics, and many of the homeless are psychotics. I've seen it from across the street. They can see if you're zapping into them and they pick up the vibe. They'll come right over to you. They think you're interested in them. So don't look at them. Don't look at them in any way. But don't look scared because they're like animals, many of them. And they sense fear. I'm telling you exactly like it is. And we all have to live in this jungle. The only ones that don't live in the jungle are the uh, senators with uh, Secret Service guards, the very rich who never, ever set foot in the street. The rest of us, though, in the middle class do have to deal with this issue. And again, I was in New York last week. Big deal. Yeah, it was a big deal to me. I don't go there too often anymore. After my mother moved away and then she passed on, I, my publishers come out here. We talk by email, whatever, phone. Who goes there? I don't go there. But I enjoyed it. I loved staying. I loved New York, except walking at night 
was a little testy. I got to tell you, I was with a small group of people. We all felt that right under the surface there was homicide. We sensed a box cutter right underneath the vest, right underneath the Santa Claus's jingle bell cup. There was a box cutter waiting to strike. So, you know, it's a, it's a very big issue here. And I'm asking you for some homeless horror stories because everyone listening to this show who has visited San Francisco or L.A. or New York or lives there, you have to navigate this every day. And what are we going to do about this? What would the Republicans do about it when they win? What will they do when they win? Are they going to take this on? Bill is calling the Savage Nation. He claims he's a shrink. I'm sure he is. He has some ideas. Bill, what would your ideas be to solve this problem? Uh, good to talk to you, Dr. Savage. I hope before we finish, you'll let me say something about the Trump phenomena and Ben Carson. But since I've been a practicing psychiatrist for over 30 years, let me comment on deinstitutionalization. Uh, they were supposed, when they cleared out the state hospitals, they were supposed to set up a network of community mental health centers. But it's kind of like the wall on the Mexico border. It was legislated but not adequately funded. So now you have all the chronic schizophrenics either on the streets or warehoused in local jails. And the more now, right. schizophrenics. Yeah, let, me, let me interject here. You're right. Police are now lay psychiatrists. Police have to treat the mentally ill who have been thrown on the streets. Jails are now de facto mental hospitals in many cases, especially in big cities. Bill, you know that better than I do. Definitely. They uh, now more schizophrenics are warehoused in public in the in the local jails than in state hospitals. There are more schizophrenics incarcerated than there are illegal aliens, and you know that's a hell of a lot of people. Wow, that, that's a heck of a statistic. So they closed the mental hospitals, and now they put them into the jails. So what care do they give them in jails other than medication? What do they put them on? What, what kind of medications are they throwing at them to, to stop their behavior? It's, it's less than th those few that are in state hospitals get. No, no, but I understand. But what, do they, what drugs are they using these days to control them? Um, they, they tend to use the cheaper... Uh, older first generation antipsychotics what, what do you mean you mean you mean stuff like thorazine exactly thorazine melaril are still commonly used in um jails yes and do they work at all do they work these first generation antipsychotic meds uh they can have some benefit but there are many negative uh side effects and not very user friendly in many ways yeah, another, I, I understand some of the side effects from psychiatrist friends, and they're, they're not very very uh, palatable for the individual on the drugs either, by the way. Yeah. The, well, gate, the gate is thrown off, et cetera. But l let's not go into the medicine. How would you solve this problem, Bill? Um, I think we've got to reconsider um, how we deal with uh, the chronic schizophrenics and uh, have more outreach programs where in some cities they have mobile units that go around and uh, identify and try to provide intervention for some of the homeless schizophrenics. Well, um, I think that, wait a minute, wait a minute, you're onto something. I think that we could, Al Sharpton, who just got fired from MSNBC and thrown to a Sunday morning show at 8 o'clock, he has a lot of buses and stuff that he uses to bring people into riots and mobs like that. He could probably go around and he could become a lay psychiatrist since he's a, a fake reverend. He could become a fake doctor and he could treat the homeless, I would think. That could be his next job. I also loved your idea of the Pope uh, uh, putting his money where his mouth is and opening up Vatican City to be a sanctuary maybe for all. I think the Vatican City him. should become a sanctuary city for all of those desperate Syrian refugees, the African refugees especially are entitled to a nice clean bed in the, in, the, in the Vatican, and there's no reason for one man to live in such a large castle, is there? He has a lot of empty rooms. I think you ought to bring in all of the Africans that are flooding into Europe. He should put up or shut up. And then he ought to sell the Sistine Chapel ceiling to an art collector in uh, Zurich and use the money to, to feed the homeless. Then I'll believe one word he has to say. Uh, but we well know that we're living in strange times. When you see a former bouncer made into a pope, and then he becomes an expert on climate, and he comes to give a lecture, and the Congress of the United States, which knows very well there's supposed to be a firm wall, a steel wall between church